I think that we've designed the internet um, putting convenience and low cost and innovation and flexibility as the absolute priorities. And we've been doing that for 20, 30 years. And we've never really made security a priority. And the result is that we have a huge amount of vulnerabilities baked into the system. We have insecure software, which people are still using. We have insecure hardware, which people are still using. Um, we have badly designed networks. We have um, vulnerabilities all over the place, which can be exploited by any number of the possible categories of malefactors. We have spies, hostile governments, hostile military um, operations conducted over um, computers and networks. Um, we have the hooligans and the activists and the pranksters. And then we have the criminals. And although it makes sense to divide them up into those categories when we're um, looking at them as threat actors, um, many of the tools they're using are really similar. Um, the the zero-day vulnerability, a bit of social engineering, that could be used by anyone. And people did, did say to me when I first started writing this, uh, why are you turning your attention from European security, which you clearly know a little bit about, even if many people think you're wrong and mad, to internet security, which you um, don't have a record on. And actually, as, as I started researching this, I became more and more aware of the parallels that we built up a European security order at the end of the Cold War, basically with the Paris Charter onwards, that was based on an assumption of goodwill and trust, that we all basically get on, we may have our difficulties, but we can resolve them. And this rules-based security order, with very few sanctions, but a lot of cooperation and dialogue, um, will work for the indefinite future. And that's pretty much the way we set the internet up, assuming at the beginning it was going to be for academic purposes. Um, we never thought about questions of identity and anonymity, and in, we never thought about e-commerce. It was actually against the rules, such as they were, to use the internet for commercial purposes. Um, back, back in the beginning. And if anyone had said back then, this is going to become the central nervous system of modern life, we're going to use it for all our vital messaging, for e-commerce, for banking, for our critical infrastructure, for all these things. A lot of those people in the early days would have said, well, hang on, it's not really designed for that. Are you sure um, that you really want to go down this road? But we went down it because it worked. It was cheap, it was convenient, it was flexible, you could develop it. And so now we're quite stuck, and I think one of the first messages of my book is this is going to get worse, and quite possibly a lot worse, before it gets better. We've actually become habituated, accustomed, to really serious breaches. If I'd said five, ten years ago, OPM is going to be hacked and 20 million files on government servants are going to be stolen. Well, first of all, people have said, what's OPM? <laughs> 10, 15 years ago, they might have said, what's hacked? Um, but we have these breaches happening all the time now, to the point that it's actually quite difficult as a journalist, and I cover cybersecurity for The Economist, to get space to report this. My friends at the FT and other papers go to the news editor and say, Megacorp's just been hacked, 10 million customer details gone, maybe the Chinese, maybe criminals, we don't know, all sorts of implications. And the response from the news editor in most news organisations is kind of same old, same old, why is that different from the breach we ran a story about last week? So we've got used to the idea that breaches are normal, but actually they're not. Tens of billions of dollars a year are flowing out of our pockets into the criminal economy. Now, I'm very sceptical of the estimates that are made by cybersecurity companies because obviously they've got an interest in talking the threat up and also who really knows, but people are talking about $500 billion a year, and that's not just a, a loss to us. A large chunk of that is going into the pockets of some of the worst people on the planet, people who would like to do us harm in other ways. So I'm quite gloomy about that. 